Hello and welcome to Bay College's lecture videos for Math 085. This is section 1.4, part 1. We're going to work with problem solving with whole numbers. Essentially, we're working with application problems. A lot of students like to call them story problems. I don't like to call them story problems. I like to refer to them as applications. All right, basic strategy for word problems, which are applications. There's five steps. And how I explain it is the most important step actually incorporates four of the five steps. When it comes to any story problem or any word problem or any application that you come across is to understand the words. And in order to understand the words, the first thing we have to do is we have to read the problem. And our goal in reading it is to understand the words. Make sure we know what these words are. Because if we don't know what the words mean, we can't go any further. As an example, if a story problem gives you an isosceles triangle, if you don't know what an isosceles triangle is, you can't go any further if you don't understand the word and what it means. The second step is to read it again. But this time, it isn't just to understand the words. We've already done that. This is to say, what's the given information? Or essentially, what do we know? What do we know? What's given to us? What are the actual values that I can use? What are the operations I'm going to apply? So we read it a second time saying, what's given to us? The third time, guess what we do? We read it again. And when we read it, we ask ourselves, what will I find? What is it asking me to find? What am I going to find? So that's what we do. We read it three times. What do, we, do we understand the words? What's the given information? What am I looking to find with that given information? Step four, and I'm going to be honest, is the most difficult one. This is where we build our expression or build our equation and use the operations. And what I mean by that is this is where we're going to simplify our expression or solve the equation that we build. Okay. Then the last step of any story problem is to read it again. Read it a fourth time to say, does the answer that I found actually answer the question? Is it a logical solution? Does it make sense? Okay. So let's say you're asked to find you know, uh, the difference between 5 and 2. If you find a value that's 100, well, obviously that wouldn't even make sense. We're just subtracting two numbers. We're not going to get a value that's larger than the two values we started with. So we just assess here by reading it one more time. Did we answer the question? Does my question make sense? And when it comes to any application problem, always remember units, if units are necessary. All right, so let's look at our first example here. It says, find the sum of the product of 78 and 32 and the difference between 7,600 and 2,200, or 7,600, 2,200. So I read it the first time. Do I understand the words? For me, yes. I know what a sum is. I know what a product is. I know what a difference is. And I can see what numbers we have here. So I understand the words. Now I'm going to read it a second time. And I'm going to ask myself, well, what is this giving me? What do I know? It's telling me to find a sum. I know that that means addition. But what am I finding the sum of? Well, the given information says I'm finding the sum of a product. Well, I've got to think for a moment here. The sum of a product, I'm going to add something being multiplied. At first, that might be a little confusing, but we spend a little time thinking about it. The sum of a product. That means I'm going to multiply something together and sum it. But sum it to what? Well, if we continue reading, it's the difference between two other numbers. So I'm going to find the difference between two other numbers. So <clears throat> I'm still in the process of part two. I'm reading it for the second time saying, OK, I know what sum is. I know what product is. It means multiplication. I know what difference is. What else is given information? The product of 78 and 32. 
the difference between 7,600 and 2,200. And I'm going to sum those. So now I'm going to read it a third time to make sure that I was able to take this given information. And will it bring me to something that it's asking me to find? So I'm going to read it. It says, find the sum of the product of 78 and 32 and the difference between 76 and 2,200. So it's asking me to find the sum of this product and that difference. And if I read it, the sum of the product and the difference. The sum of the product and the difference. So I am on the right track. I know that I can simplify this. And just by taking this information for this particular example, it actually helped me build this expression. So now I can actually simplify it and find that answer. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is 78 times 32. And for time's sake, we could write this horizontally and work it out. But I already worked it out ahead of time. This is 2,496. And for practice, in the margins of your notes, go ahead and try that for yourself. Here we have 7,600 minus 2,200. Again, I already worked that out. And I got 5,400. That's the difference between those values. And now I'm going to add them together. And I get 7,896. And there's our value. Now, if we think about it, we found the sum of a product of these two values. And these are relatively large values. So it's going to give us a big number. 2,496, relatively speaking, is large. The difference between these two large numbers, well, that's a pretty big number, too. And if I add these two numbers together, I get this value, 7,896. So I have to assume, you know, from the looks of things, when I read the problem again for the uh, fourth and final time, I say, you know what, this is a reasonable answer to get. Now, there were no units given here, so I don't have to worry about units. It was just a series of numbers and operations. All right, let's move on to the next example. We're told to, uh, if the quotient of 1,255 and 5 is decreased by the sum of 120 and 37, what is the difference? Now, if we look at this, we read it the first time. I'm assessing, do I understand the words? I'm comfortable with the word quotient and sum and decreased by or difference. I'm familiar with those words. So now I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to read it a second time and say, what's the given information? Well, it asked me to find the quotient. So that's division. That's given of 1,255 and 5. And then this is decreased by the sum. Sum tells me addition. Decrease tells me subtraction of 120 and 37. But here's where we have to be careful. I have to put this in parentheses because I'm decreasing by the sum. Decreased by the sum. Decreased by this whole sum. So I have to put this together before I can decrease it. So the order of the words kind of tells me the order in which I have to approach this given information. So looking at this, I try to read this. In the same way I got that, that's kind of one way to practice reading it that third time. I have the quotient of 1,255 and 5. And it's being decreased by the sum of 120 and 37. So what is it asking me to find? Well, when I read it again, it says, what is the difference? It says, simplify these and find their difference. So I'm going to do that. 1,255 divided by 5 is going to be 200. And 51, 120 and 37 is 157. And the difference of these two values, 251 minus 157, is 94. So this is my value. And if we look at our numbers, well, we had 1255 divided by 5. When we divide, our number is getting smaller. So we get this value. It makes sense to me. 120. 
and 37. We're summing those to value together. And 157, I'm pretty confident with that. And then finding the difference of these two numbers. If I just look at them, if I just estimate it, 251 minus 157, well, this is about 250. And that's about 150. And that number is pretty close to 100. So I can feel confident that I did that work correctly. All right, let's do one more example. This one says a right triangle has a base of 6 feet and a height of 8 feet and a third side of 10 feet. Well, hopefully we know what a right triangle is. If not, we can refer to the illustration or maybe look up some resource to figure out what is a right triangle. A right triangle is defined as a triangle that has one angle of 90 degrees. So we have 6 feet, 8 feet, and 10 feet. And if we read this our second time, it tells me a right triangle has a base of 6 feet. So this is my base. A height of 8 feet, that goes up, so that's 8 feet. And the third side is 10 feet long. So we're asked to find the perimeter. Well, if we recall from uh, previous lectures, if you're watching these videos in order, we know how to find the perimeter. It's the addition of all sides. So I can say 10 feet plus 8 feet plus 6 feet. The distance around is perimeter. 10 and 8 is 18. 18 and 6 is 24 feet. So does this answer the question? Well, the perimeter is the distance around. A triangle has three sides. And I added up all three sides to get 24 feet. Now, notice I kept the units. I'm adding feet. This feet and this feet and this feet give me a total of 24 feet. It also asks us to find the area. So if I want to find the area, I have to have a formula for this particular one. The area of a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. Well, I was given that information in here. If we go back to step two when we read it, what was the given information? And step three, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find area. We can use this formula. The area equals half of the base, which is 6, and the height, which is 8. So now I can multiply this together because 1 half times the base times the height. It's all multiplication. I can use that associative property. So I'm going to say 1 half of 6. Well, I know this is 3. And 3 times 8 is 24. Or I could say, like I said, the associative property of multiplication, half of 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is also 24. But because this is an application problem and we're dealing with units, we have feet, what are the units of this? It's not just feet because it's area. And if we recall, when multiplying area, we always get square units. So we're going to get square feet, 24 square feet. It is just by coincidence, because of this type of triangle, that we have 24 for both values, even though we found them using different uh, things like perimeter and area. So find some application problems. Try them on your own. The only way you get proficient at any type of math is through practice. So keep practicing, and thank you for watching.